Welcome to episode 92 of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. Plato, the ancient Greek philosopher, once said that the price good men pay for indifference to public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. Considering the fact that he was born around 427 B.C., our current state of affairs is nothing new. Some of the evil that we are facing now is all of the inflated outrage about critical race theory, which is now redefined to loosely include any and all talk about the history of this country. It's amazing to see so many people shouting with red faces about this theory being taught to their school children which of course is incorrect. The reality is that they don't want any talk of what has happened in our past to be told to the new generation. They want to continue pushing the toxic narratives that have been in place for so long. This last weekend, I went through some old memorabilia, some things I haven't seen since I was a child. Some of it was my schoolwork. It was pretty horrifying to read a highly praised piece of work I did in the third grade that parroted the lies that I had been told about history and the state of our world at that time. It was really wrong, and I was oddly fired up about it in this ridiculous paper I wrote about what it meant to be an American. Clear toxic brainwashing. As we have some of the events of the past brought to our attention these days, events that never seem to make it into the history books, it becomes more clear that we need to start from scratch. What we were taught was so seriously whitewashed that it is of no use other than to maintain the current toxic systems and mindsets. And for reference, I wasn't raised in the South or in some backwoods, backwards town. I was raised on the West Coast. The history books were not just ignoring what had happened where I lived. They were covering up what happened in all the other parts of the country. It was a national cover-up. I remember watching an interview with Bill Barr where he was asked, what the history books would say about things that had happened during the last administration. He said that history is written by the people who win, so he wasn't particularly worried about that. Just think about that. History is written by the winners. This removes all accountability and potential shame that could come with perpetrating evil. It supports the practice of any means to an end. And it's not that we can't truthfully reconstruct history. We can. It's that we don't have the intestinal fortitude to tell the truth. But we can never solve our problems if we don't have the courage to face the truth. Have you ever been in a relationship that had serious problems and you just tried to gloss over those problems and ignore them? It may work in the short term, but it never truly works in the long term. Every problem you ignore becomes a gaping wound, and ultimately there isn't enough healthy flesh left to keep it all together. It becomes diseased and deadly. That is how our ignorance of history is. It keeps us from finding solutions and mending wounds. It keeps us in this diseased state. What do you think the worst thing would be if we decided to be open to learning about the past? Is it that we cannot handle knowing how evil people can be, or in fact were? Is it that we would have to rethink our perceptions about people who we love or loved? Would it mean that we would then be required to construct a world that was more fair and equitable? Once you know, you can't unknow. 
Our healing as a nation, as a world, and as individual souls is dependent upon our willingness to be open to the realities that may be difficult. There is nothing we can fix until we are willing to face it. We've never been able to find another way that works. It's a natural law. It is the work we are here to do. Our individual work, as well as our collective work, is reflected in the current state of affairs as they seemingly relate to politics. But in reality, there is no division. There isn't real life and then political life. The work we do as individuals is reflected in the work we do as a collective culture. We will always have to band together in some way to create the world we live in. This is a scary concept because most of the trouble we get into seems to blossom when we gather in groups. When we gather in groups, our natural tendencies, those pesky shortcomings of ours, seem to be exacerbated. So we have to keep an eye on the groups that have gathered, the groups we belong to, and we need to make sure our voices and visions for the future are reflected by those who are amassing power. Another quote from Plato is, the heaviest penalty for declining to rule is to be ruled by someone inferior to you. We may not want to rule, but we need to make sure our voices are louder than those who are trying to hold us back. We are strong enough to demand the truth. One of the reasons that some want to shut down any and all talk about the past is that they believe that people of color will gain enough control and immediately do to us what we have done to them. This is a pretty common refrain from old white men. First off, this is a stunning admission in and of itself. This is the admission of someone who knows They are the oppressor and must maintain that position because they are sure that everyone else is exactly as evil as they are. As we have discussed, the people here in this school are all working from different levels of spiritual awareness. Those at the lowest levels are thrilled to hold power over other people, to abuse people, and to oppress people. That's all in a day's work to them. When people are operating at the lower levels of awareness, they believe that everyone else is also working at that level. They believe that everyone else sees the world in the exact same way that they do. But people at the higher levels of spiritual awareness are no longer stewing in those toxic thoughts and urges. People at the higher levels just want to live their lives in a fashion that does not harm others. They are not driven to control and abuse and oppress. Their agendas look quite different. So is this a reasonable fear? People of color are exactly the same as everyone else. They have people who are working at all the different levels of spiritual awareness. The same is true for everyone who identifies as either a Democrat or a Republican. The same is true for everyone who identifies as Catholic or Protestant or Jewish or Muslim. The same is true for women. The same is true for men. There is no group where everyone is at a low level or a group where everyone is at the higher levels. I must add a caveat here, because there is one organized group, the white evangelical Christians, who seem to have collectively gone off the deep end. They have been led to be anti-science, anti-vax, anti-intellectualism, racist, sexist, and as it turns out, anti-democratic. 
A morning consult poll finds that 26% of the U.S. population qualified as highly right-wing authoritarian. What this means is they embrace a system of government which is defined as the desire to submit to some authority. They support aggression that is directed against whomever the authority says should be targeted. And they have a desire to have everyone follow the norms and social conventions that the authority says should be followed. This is an inclination to follow a demagogue and reject democratic values. Robert P. Jones, author of White Too Long, The Legacy of White Supremacy in American Christianity, says that white evangelical Protestants have a theological proclivity toward authoritarianism, which is built on a set of hierarchies that have been defended as divinely ordained, Christian over non-Christian, Protestant over Catholic, white over non-white, men over women. It demands deference particularly to white male charismatic leaders and builds identity through a politics of aggression to a shifting array of perceived outgroups. We are seeing the rise of this with our own eyes. It doesn't help that many are embracing an end times mindset and seem to be hell bent on making that happen. Groups. This is why I'm so terrified of groups of people. Some are so easily led down dark, dark paths. We see them being consumed by this darkness, all while professing to follow Jesus. We are all in the same system. We are all on the same journey. Yet we are driven by this internal madness that makes us want to splinter off into groups that make little to no sense. People who are working at the lower levels of spiritual awareness are adept at appealing to the lowest instincts of those who are still struggling to learn that which will lift them out of these dark places. They work to keep them in the darkness and to drag them down even further. And they do it under the cover of religion. No one needs religion to do what they came here to do. You can rise to the highest levels of spiritual awareness without ever stepping inside a house of worship. You rise by the choices you make in your everyday life. You rise by living a life that is anchored in integrity, honesty, empathy, and humility. Those qualities are inconsistent with racism, sexism, and oppression of any kind. They are also inconsistent with destroying the planet. If you make choices that are based in integrity, honesty, empathy, and humility, you will never find reason to destroy other people or the planet that we inhabit. When you reach the higher levels, you are no longer fueled by greed, jealousy, a lust for power, destruction, or revenge. These are no longer a part of your thought patterns. What worries me about the people who want to attach themselves to organized religion is that they are often drawn to people who will endorse and sanctify their very worst instincts, the instincts that make them want to feel separate and superior. No one is superior. We are all from the same source. Though we are all at different levels of awareness, our souls are equal in importance. Since we are working at different levels, we need to give those at the lowest levels the time, space, and accountability so that they can be lifted to higher levels. But while we do that, we must make sure they never have access to the power over others that they so desperately crave. 
They are not looking to work in a meaningful way with others. They are only interested in dragging the rest of us down to their level. It is our job to keep this thing moving in a positive direction. My sifting through memorabilia also made me think about my past, a past that I have neatly constructed in my mind with the occasional rewrites that one does when we pull old memories out and then put them back. In a pile of papers, I found some excruciating writing from decades ago about a relationship I was in at the time. It began with the recognition that things were not going well, then the drama of the relationship ending, and my confused and emotional writings after it ended. I have to admit, when I first read these letters, I wanted to rush to the fire pit to burn them. I was mortified by how raw and messy it all was. I wanted it gone, but I didn't give myself this option. I waited, read it again, then again, and yet again. It was a process of coming to terms with who I was in the past, which bears little resemblance to who I am now. It was embarrassing. I was such a mess. But I could see in these writings the beginnings of my recognition of my intuition, though I didn't have the wisdom to follow it. I saw someone who was fighting reality and clinging to some sort of illusion I had constructed about the relationship and the future it would bring me. I also saw glimmers of strength that would pull me through the messy end of the relationship and the return to a more sane life. What the me back then didn't realize is that everything that would and still does mean anything to me, would begin the year after this messy breakup. I had no idea what I was in for. I had no idea how I could get more than I had expected I deserved. I couldn't possibly know what a great thing it was that I was going to be free of this situation that I was clinging to. I had to forgive myself I had to own some pain that I had tried to forget. Ultimately, I felt so fortunate that I had a window into this time in my life. The journey we are on is messy. It is embarrassing and sometimes humiliating. But without embracing our past messiness, we can't fully appreciate the growth that sprouted from it. We can't see the testament to our resilience. We can't see how far we have come. The past, whether personal or national, must be dealt with, not only so that we can make amends, but so that we can witness our growth, both as individuals and as a culture. We need to take an unsparing look at what was, so we can have an appreciation of what is, and so we can imagine what could be. We need to fully face what happened so we can heal the wounds that we carry around today. And we can never lose faith in our ability to grow and rebound from all the struggles we have experienced along the way. We're here for all of it, the good, the bad, and the mortifying. Thanks for returning for another week of Rebirth Revolution. Sending love and cool air to all in the Pacific Northwest. Wow, what a rough start to the summer you have all endured. Thanks to our top listeners for the month of June in Washington, Missouri, Florida, and Nebraska, along with those in Ontario, Canada, and the UK. All are welcome and all are appreciated. 
You can always contact me by emailing rebirthrev at gmail.com. I'd love to hear how you're doing. We can be found on all the podcast apps, YouTube, and on social media. Until next week, be open to the past. Try not to join any crazy groups, get vaccinated if possible, and stay cool. Remember, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet, not one ounce more or one ounce less. Stay strong and safe and fully in your integrity, honesty, empathy, and humility.